I didn't like Hebrew school, but who likes Hebrew school? Uh, and one of the days I got very upset, and I told the principal at Hebrew school, go to hell. Well, you had to know this. We only lived one block from the Hebrew school. My mother had me by my, in no time at all, and she had me back up there apologizing like crazy. Unfortunately, I didn't go to Hebrew school. My parents could not afford to belong to a synagogue. And religion was very important in our household. They wouldn't answer the telephone, and uh, they'd always get somebody to come in and, uh, and tear the toilet paper ahead of time. <laughs> My house was always open, and I've slept over at some of the nicest houses, largest houses everybody liked <coughs> to be at my house. There wasn't screaming. My parents were very soft-spoken. My father was a difficult man, but he saved that just for us. My father was a very quiet man, very quiet. If you talked to him, he'd answer, but he wouldn't look for conversation. <laughs> we got married in 1954. Right. So we'll be married 57 years in June. We met at Camp Saginaw. We were counselors. We met in 1951, and they said camp romances would never last. He claimed I went to camp to find a husband. And she claimed she went to camp to take care of kids. Well, what's the truth? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to nursing school, so I went to Sinai. And I did very well. I was fourth from the top of my class. I really loved it. And in August of 59, I met Harry Lichter, who was seven years older than I. And we fell in love. And he was afraid that he'd be old enough to be a grandfather by the time I was ready to have children. And he talked me out of, he talked me into leaving school, which I did. I guess when I was 18 or 19, this friend, Harry Zunikoff, we had known him for years, they lived a block away from us, from me. Harry called and said, would you go out on a blind date? And I said, Harry, please, I can't. I've done a couple, I, it just doesn't work. Well, please, just do this one. Well, need I tell you that this one was Phyllis. And whatever it was, it worked. And it's interesting, Phyllis always says to me, she lived on the second floor on Callow Avenue. And she said, I knew when you came walking up that steps that you were the one. So I was 22. Phyllis was actually, well, that was our first disagreement because we got the marriage license. We were remarried August 14. Got the marriage license. And I put her age down as 22, just like mine. Her birthday wasn't going to be until October, so she actually was 21 and 9 twelfths. Do you know it cost me two more dollars? I had to go back and get a new marriage license because she would not accept 22 on her marriage license. 